Hi guys, and it's here the Green Team Dino Gauge again. Second day on the trot, so we're on a roll. Um, we completed the chassis straightening yesterday of the yacht crane, and today's at the job is bogus. This is the reason for the delay to the project for 12 months while I've been trying to work things out. And I have a cunning plan, and it might just work to the workbench and I'll explain all. So this is where we got to yesterday but what I have done already this morning is carve a hole in the bottom of this little box to see if my little scheme that I had planned might work. I purchased from the same website as the brass, eBay obviously, a little gearbox and a motor and I also bought some bevel gears. Um, the intention is to make this self-propelled crane self-propelled and it was the trying to source gearboxes and motors is what caused the delay to this project moving forward. It still might not work because the clearances are very very tight indeed. Um, it, this motor and gearbox literally just clears in and I've got to shorten the shaft a touch and move the gear a bit further up the um, output shaft I suppose you could call it but what I have to do first is to work out if I come in close here you will see here a tiny threaded hole there's one in each side and that is for mounting the gearbox. If anyone out there has used these little tiny gearboxes, if they know what size that thread is, um, I'm not sure if it's something like 10BA or whether it's metric. Um, it comes from China so I'm assuming it's going to be a tiny little metric hole but uh, yeah, if anyone actually knows for certain what that is, so I can source some screws and then I can mount this on the boat. This isn't mounting in here, this is a slot to allow it to travel, but I've got to mount it on the bogey so that it will pivot with the uh, going round curves so it stays meshed. Uh, yeah, so that is why I sat for 12 months scratching my head. I had various other little uh, motor options that I considered but uh, it wasn't really going to work and I wasn't happy with how that came out so uh, I've abandoned that and purchased these much better much more refined so that's what the plan is today's job building the bogies here we have two baggy side frames and if I find the packet which I have just had two minutes ago of course there it is over here and you have a bolster with a brass insert two washers and a screw now the kit comes with these wheels perfectly good come with brass bearing cups that fit nicely flush in the uh, recesses in the bogey in the axle box. However, for me, just to be awkward, the shaft here was too big for the gear that I need for the drive system. So these have to go and I have purchased I have purchased some of these Slater's wagon wheels. Um, the only issue with these is now is the shaft is perfect. I had still had to drill out the gear um, for the other bogey, but um, the axle stubs are longer, and and so are the bearing cups. This means I have to trim the end of the axle off is easy enough
one wheel, two wheel and a little top of bearings. One, two, three. The fourth one just to be awkward. Four. These handy little tubs by the way. Could go around on the depot with stuff dumped in. Gravel bins on the track or whatever. So all always useful. But anyway, back to the thing involved here. This is our bogey assembly. It's quite simple. Insert the bearings into the bogey frames, which I've already cleaned up, so removed all of the um, flashing. And glue the bolster in the slot. And it goes in this way up. It's quite a simple little design. Three pieces, two wheels. This no compensation, but then they're only a sh tiny short wheelbase. So the first thing to put in the bearings in the bogies. Now that's quite simple. That goes in there like that. A gentle tap with the hammer. Now these don't go flush all the way in because the bogey isn't thick enough. So I'll just bang. put them home. hard because they, they're a nice snug fit. I'm not sure whether they'll split over time but that one pushed in with the finger. They can be pulled back out again. Now because they stick out the wheels don't go all the way in far enough because of the width of the bogey. So with my side cutters, I'm just going to snip some of the end of the axle off. Don't have to go mad. Quite hard. And this one. Obviously if you're not powering it up and you're going to use the original wheels then you don't have to do any of this because they all fit properly. I'm just going to clean it up with a file. Can use a little file actually. To deburr it to ensure it still fits easily in the the bearing. disc freely which it does which it does so that's that one's fine and clean these ones and again check and it goes all the way home which it does So we shall glue on the first bogey frame. I'm using my super strength. Super glue. In the centre of the slot. Bring it up to the top. 
just let that sit for a minute. <coughs> Insert the wheels. Now we've got the first side on, I'm going to put the glue on again, this bolster here, this end. Got to make sure again you get the bogey the right way up. First wheel bearing in, second wheel bearing in. We'll get it on the track quickly. Hold it down so it's all square and wait for it to grab. And that's it. Stuck myself to it. But it's nice and square. There is a little bit of side movement. And that is now ready to mount on the underframe. Quite simple. One washer on there. Move up that way. Another washer on there with the screw. Don't do it up tight, just just so it's still loose and that top washer can just slide freely under the screw head. I'll put, take the motor out. Well I'll leave the motor in so you can see while I bring the other bogey over. Which I've already assembled. And that will go in this end. As you can see, this is where the gear, bevel gear drive is. But like I said, I've still got to do a little bit of fettling. So that is the bogies on the job. Okay, so we have one step forward and two steps back. Um, as you can see by the position of the buffers, that the bogies don't sit centrally on the underframe in the holes provided. And it's the same both ends. The bosses just aren't in the centre. You can see how the buffers line up above the rail and to one side. Which means we've now got to do modifications to the centre bosses and make the bogey sit central. Well that looks like that's going to be the subject for the next video. As you can see from this little clip just how far out that is. It's not sitting square and it's also not sitting flat. So there we have our little bit of disappointment. It's not the best kit. We known it from the start but it was something to build and we're going to build it and we're going to improve it and we're going to make it hopefully look a little bit straighter than it is because you haven't seen the jib mouldings yet but anyway we can make stuff and as we go along so we'll see you next time in the next video when we remount the bogies centrally and square so we'll catch you next time so enjoy your modeling stay safe See you soon. Catch ya.